Hi, this is Nash with Alpha 5. Please smash that like button, hit the subscribe, and you won't miss anything that I release in the future. I got a client question. They reached out over email that's listed below. How to minimize the premium on a policy. So once you figure out why designing whole life policies in a different manner as opposed to the traditional route of all your money going to base premium, then it starts to click why minimizing that base premium is actually very valuable and putting the rest of your money into PUAs can provide a lot more uh, potential benefits for you. When you realize that, you're like, okay, how can I squeeze that down as much as possible? So first, let's talk about what does minimizing the premium do? When we talk about premium, normally people are talking about base premium. This is essentially the costly insurance that you hear a bad rap about out there. This is buying you whole life death benefit. This is a very expensive type of, of death benefit and that's why um, it gets a bad rap. The other, and we at Alpha Crusaders minimize this as much as possible. So we try to put 10% or less of our money into uh, the base premium component of the policy. The rest goes into paid up additions. It's another type of whole life insurance, but it's a mini contract and it provides a much, uh, it provides a safe, liquid, flexible area to position the rest of your money. Safe in the fact that it helps generate safe, predictable returns, meaning the base premium dollars are more sensitive to dividend fluctuations. It's liquid, it's a, it's a contract in itself, so it gives you an immediate death benefit. It gives you access to liquidity or cash value right off the bat, not over time, but right off the bat, and it continues to compound and grow over time. And flexible, meaning these are, for certain companies, very flexible, it's not a bill. Your base premium is a bill, and so that can be a, a challenge, especially when looking at, at larger uh, uh, portions or allocations of money, paid up additions can be very flexible. You can pay at your leisure. So this is why minimizing the pre base premium uh, provides a lot of benefits. So let's talk about what the limitations are. There are two major limitations. One is the IRS limitations in minimizing that as much as possible. And the second is the insurance company limits. So in order to max fund or uh, basically uh, hit your funding target, especially by dumping in a lot into PUAs. There is a relationship of the death benefit to the IRS MEC laws, Modified Endowment Contract laws, which essentially are set. And if you go over that MEC limit, they call it, then it triggers unfavorable tax consequences. So in IRS section, code section 7702, it defines what keeps the life insurance contract uh, life insurance, which has favorable tax, tax treatment. And if you go or you cause your insurance contract to uh, become a modified endowment contract or a MEC for short, then it triggers unfavorable tax consequences because it, it uh, has some limitations as to how much money you can put in and that sorts of things. And so we want to stay within that without triggering uh, unfavorable tax consequences. So those are the IRS limits. And the reason that's important to the base premium is that the base premium is buying you whole life death benefit. And your death benefit has a direct correlation to the MEC limit. Uh, so uh, at least a portion of it. Then the second is the insurance company limits. So beyond the IRS, insurance companies may have ratios of how much base premium to PUAs you can put in. And so a lot of companies, say Mass Mutual, um, has a 10x limitation. So if your base premium is $5,000, you can put up to a maximum of $50,000 total into the policy. So you can 10x 10x that that base premium and put that in. Uh, you can't go a dollar over that because that violates the limitations they put on. Other companies like Guardian allow 50x in the first year. So with a $5,000 base premium, you could actually put in a very significant amount over that. <clears throat> so $250,000 into the policy in the first year. 
uh, after the first year, they also drop down to 10 times the base premium. Some agents will argue, no, Guardian's policy contract says only three times uh, you know, base premium to PUA limitations. That is true unless level Q term is attached to the policy, which allows for much higher funding limitations. The second limitation by the insurance company is, you know, with smaller policies, uh, there is a minimum amount of whole life death benefit they will actually put in force. So why does that matter uh, as to how much premium you can do? Well, the premium is essentially buying a certain amount of whole life death benefit. So if you're trying to go too small with it, they may say, no, our limitation is 100,000 in terms of whole life death benefit. We're not gonna place anything uh, below that. So that's another limitation to be aware of when looking at such a small policy, especially if you're taking advantage of the 50X, limit, you know, 50X uh, limitations then you know you can squeeze that base premium down as much as possible and still get a lot of money into the policy you might run into the minimum whole life death benefit uh, limitation there so let's look at a few examples here I've got an all base design this is on a four-year-old male preferred plus and all of the money is going to base premium dollars so a hundred thousand dollars going to whole life death benefit with all of the money going to whole life there is very little in cash value to show for it about three and a half percent coming back to cash value and then it takes a, a, a substantial amount of time to actually break even with your money in this case you're eleven hundred thousand for seven years seven hundred thousand total out of pocket zero thereafter so eleven years before you catch up and actually break even with your money with an IBC design you have a much uh, more flexible outlay so ten thousand dollars base premium the rest going into PUAs you have a hundred thousand dollars out of pocket again but you have eighty two thousand dollars to show for it without any any tricks that we can do that we have up our sleeves so a much higher amount coming back to show for it in liquidity and then in this 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 case it's actually breaking even in year five so five hundred thousand out of pocket over that amount in available in cash value so let's take a deeper dive what are some other things to consider those are those same policies here in excel side by side that base premium this is the normal whole life insurance or a hundred percent base premium what what this is showing here is that this is essentially your bill every year one hundred thousand dollars that is due otherwise your policy may not survive or we have to significantly modify it uh, to allow it to continue we're on the on the IBC or high cash value design this is a 1090 split ten thousand dollars to base premium that's your bill and then the rest is flexible so a lot more flexibility you can pay up to the the higher amount of a hundred thousand but you're not obligated to and you're not at risk of losing your policy if you can't do it the guarantees so we talked in about the break even in the PDF files right eight uh, year five here versus year eleven break even but what about the guaranteed values in the IBC design you're breaking even in year nine that was even better than the <laughs> than the all base scenario. Where are we breaking even in, in guaranteed values on the all base design? Not until year 24. That's, that's very, very uh, impactful in terms of you know, having some, some confidence in the guarantee side of these policies is drastically different. And then if we look at the differences here, so the green on the guarantees and uh, the green values here on guarantees or the dividend scale means that the high cash value design or the 1090 design is greater, this much greater in value than the all base design. So in both instances, in the guarantees and the dividend scale, you have hundreds of thousands of dollars more in not only cash value but death benefit from year eight and on. The reason that the death benefit of the all base design is higher here for seven years uh, is because it's expecting we're going to pay $100,000 out of pocket until age 95 
from this four-year-old male. So when we elect to stop paying into the policy, that death benefit is going to amortize down to how much we've actually put in, and the death benefit drops significantly. Okay, So big, big differences here and some great limitations to be aware of in terms of premium dollars. What are the limitations? Once you understand why they're important and why we minimize those base premiums as much as possible, you know, it's uh, important to understand just how low we can go uh, with the different limitations, both from the IRS and from the company limits. I hope this was helpful. Drop a comment, drop a like. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also, you can learn more at alphacrusaders.com at the link at the end of this video.